Okay, starting at the top, it says, tell whether the information in the figure allows you to conclude that point P lies on the perpendicular bisector of LM. So can we conclude that this is a perpendicular bisector? Well, if these two sides are the same and this is a 90 degree angle, then we can say that this is equal to this. So therefore, yes, we could prove it based on the converse. Oh, I didn't realize it wasn't in the frame. Converse of perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, number two. Can we use this to prove? Well, we'd have to have this perpendicular, and we'd also have to know that this is the same length as this, and it doesn't tell us that. So no, we'd need that LN is equal to NM to say that this was a perpendicular bisector. Or we'd have, oh, I keep not having it in frame. Or do we have to know that this is equal to this? So I guess I could put that, or LP equal to PM. Okay. Number three, can we prove that this is a perpendicular bisector? Nope. We need to know that this is perpendicular. So we'd have to know that PN is perpendicular to ML or NL, something like that. And then four, can we prove that this is a perpendicular bisector? Yes, we can. Um, because two of the conditions are met, then we can say that this is perpendicular. Um, so yes, converse of perpendicular bisector theorem. I'm going to zoom out because it keeps getting out of the frame. Okay, so now we're going to bring in the math part of it. So here it's asking for segment GH, and that would be this segment right here. Here it shows perpendicular. It shows that this is equal to this. So therefore, this segment is the same length as this one. So GH equals 4.6. Okay, now we repeat. QR it shows, we want to find QR, this length, shows that this is equal to this, and it's perpendicular, so therefore this side is the same length as this one, so QR equals 1.3, good. Moving on, number seven. Okay, these are the same, we're perpendicular, that means that this length is the same as this one. We're given expressions. Um, it wants to know the length of AB, but in order to find that, we have to know the value of X. So we can set these equal to solve for X. So we get X equals three. And then AB is five X, so we can just plug that in. Okay, so we get AB is 15, and that's our answer. Number eight, asking for UW, this segment here. Again, we're given expressions. If this is the same and this is perpendicular, we can say this is equal to this. So 7x plus 13 equals 9x plus 1, and just solve for x. And then once you have x, you can plug that into the expression for uw. So I'm just taking this here. And uw equals 55. And 9 and 10, now we're going to explain our reason 
opening for angle bisector, it says, tell whether the information in the figure allows you to conclude that EH bisects FEG. So does EH bisect FEG. So essentially we're looking for two conditions to be met, and if those two conditions are met, then we conclude the whole thing. So here we're shown that this is the same length and this is also perpendicular, so then we can conclude that this is equal to this. So this is yes um, because of the converse angle bisector theorem. And then for number 10, we're told this is equal to this, but we're not told anything else. So here we actually don't have enough information. No, we would need that um, angle FEA. These two angles are equal, so we would need that angle F, wait, what is it saying? Yeah, FEH is equal to angle GEH, G, oh gosh, I'm getting it right, EH, or we'd need to know that FE is perpendicular to FH and EG is perpendicular to GH. Okay, next page, flip it over. Okay, now it's asking whether we can conclude that DB equals BC. So can we conclude that db equals dc? Again, if two conditions are met, then we can prove the third. But in this case, we don't know that this is um, perpendicular. So this is no. We need to know that ab is perpendicular to bd, and dc is perpendicular to ac. And then for number 12, Okay, now we have two conditions. We see that those angles are equal. We see this perpendicular. So yes, we could say that this is equal to this. Um, and yes, because of the angle bisector theorem. Okay, back to math, which I'm sure you're happy about. Okay, 13, it wants to know the measure of ABD. So this angle right here shows this perpendicular, these two are the same, so then we can say that these two angles are the same measure. So the measure of angle A, B, D equals 20 degrees. Number 14 wants to know the length of PS right here. Again, angles are the same perpendicular, so therefore this is equal to this, so PS equals 12. And they brought in some math. Again, two conditions are met, so therefore we can say that this is equal to this over here, and we can solve for x. And now we're looking for the measure of an angle, kjl. So because these two conditions are met, these angles are equal. So 7x equals 3x plus 16. Did anybody notice I forgot to finish the last one? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. OK, so I get x equals 4. That's great. That's great. Um, it doesn't ask for x, though, in either of these. It asks for the actual measure. So what I was saying, I didn't finish it, is I found x, but I need to go plug that back in. Fg actually equals x plus 11, so I need to do 5 plus 11. Fg equals 16, yes. So this is the actual answer. That's a very common mistake because x equals 5 is always in the answer choices, and a lot of people choose it um, for getting to finish it. Then from this one, measure of angle KJL equals 7x, 7 times 4, 28. So this is 28 degrees. Okay, last couple here. An error analysis. 
So this is similar to the ones we did before. Um, describe and correct the error in the student's reasoning. Okay, here they show drawing. They show this is equal to this. This is perpendicular. Okay, it looks like perpendicular bisected me. What is the reasoning? It says because AD is equal to AE, AB will pass through point C. Well, they left out that it has to be at a 90 degree angle. So you would have to add and let's say AB is perpendicular to DE, then it'll pass through C. Then 18 um, by the angle bisector theorem x equals 5. Well, they show the angles are the same, which is great. But they show this is perpendicular, but they don't show this perpendicular over here. So they'd also need to say that BP is perpendicular to C. So we need to know that CB is perpendicular to BP. OK. The last set of problems, we're only going to do one of them because they're kind of long, but I want you to see it. It says, write an equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment with the given points. So they just give us two points. They want a perpendicular bisector. Um, let me draw it first. I'm going to draw it first. And then we'll look at the math of it. OK, so on the graph paper, Obviously, you probably don't have graph paper, so you don't have to draw it, but I just want to show you what we're doing first. It says point M is at 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's M. And N is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 1. Here's N. So here's a segment. I'm going to use some kind of straight edge to make it perfectly straight so I can really see it. Okay, here's our segment. We need a perpendicular bisector. So we need something that's perpendicular to the line um, and that hits at the exact midpoint. Um, remember slope and all that stuff? That's what we need. Some of you could eyeball it. If you found the midpoint here, look, this looks like the midpoint and you could even check that that's the midpoint. Like go down three over three, down three over three. Okay, that's the midpoint. And then for per a perpendicular line, the slope has to be opposite this one. So if this is going down one over one, down one over one, th this has to be over one, up one, over one, up one. And you could draw this line, and then you could find the equation of that line just by drawing it. So some of you might be more comfortable if you're given a challenging question like this, just drawing it out and figuring it out, because then you could just find the equation of this line, which the y-intercept is at negative two, and the slope is up one over one, so it would be y equals a slope of 1, so just x, and the y-intercept is 2. So you could just find the equation that way, y equals x minus 2. Another way to do it would be using math. Um, an equation of a perpendicular bisector, like you could find the slope. So remember slope, so write this part down. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. and then just plugging these in. Okay, so I get a slope of negative one. I need to find the equation of this line. So y equals negative one x plus b. I need the y-intercept. Um, you could find the y-intercept by graphing like I did. Like if you extended this out, you could find it here. Um, the other way to do it, and this comes up on the SATs actually a lot, is you just plug in one of these points into this equation and solve for b. So I'm going to choose this first point and just solve for y-intercept. and b equals 6. So the equation here of this line, y equals negative x plus 6. Okay. 
when I find something perpendicular to this, um, perpendicular slope would be a negative reciprocal. That was a while back. Slope is a negative reciprocal. By the way, there isn't any like this on your homework. I just am showing you a more challenging problem because if you never see them, then you'll never get smarter. Okay. So slope would be a negative reciprocal. So if our slope is negative one, a negative reciprocal of that or opposite reciprocal would be just one. Like negative one over one, if you flip it and make it opposite, it would just be one over one, so one. So we're looking at an equation y equals one x plus b. We're getting there. Is anybody following this? We need the midpoint. The midpoint of those two lines would give us the middle. Midpoint. X1 plus X2 over 2. And Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Ooh. 1 plus 7. We're almost done. And 5 plus negative 1 over 2. Get 8 over 2 and 4 over 2. 4, 2. This is the midpoint of your original. Okay, so that's where your line right here has to go through. Um, so when we find the equation of line, we're going to use this midpoint and then find the y-intercept. So here, y, well, y is 2 now. 2 equals 1 times 4 plus b. Negative 2 equals b. So now we have our b, we have our slope, and now we can actually write the equation of the line. y equals x minus 2, and this is our answer to that one problem. And now we're smart, smart. Okay, now do the next three on your own. Just kidding. Okay, we're done. Yeah, you can get up, get a laptop, um, start your homework, and let me know if you have questions.